Hey, mate, good afternoon. How are you? Hi, James. I'm fine, thank you. Good, good. Um, this must be a record for the amount of press conferences you've done <laughs> so far this week. Um, yeah. So I guess all our challenges are to try and ask you something different. But I guess when it's a busy period like this, but you're winning games, uh, it's probably a little bit better. Four wins in all competitions in a row. Solid performance against Norwich. You must be pleased with where the team's at. Yeah, I've been really pleased with how the players have performed in the certainly in the last uh, few weeks. We're getting a bit closer to the way we were early in the season, so long may that continue. I've got to talk about Jared Bowen. Uh, his form's been just scintillating so far this season. Uh, the most goal involvements out of any English player so far in the Premier League. What's been the difference, though, for you with his form this season compared to previous years? I think more getting used to being a Premier League player. I think when we took him from Hull, he, he settled in very well, I have to say. But uh, but I think just the time and getting a chance to play regular at this level, I think he's maturing. Uh, he's got a few goals for us recently, which we, we want him to continue adding to. He's certainly got, got assists this year. So he's, he's been involved in an awful lot of the good stuff we've done. But uh, we're always looking for more. We're always pushing him on, you know, demanding more from him. And I do think that he's, he can improve again, he can step up again, so let's hope he shows that in the second half of the season. I was going to say, how far can he go? Well, he's, he's doing well at the moment, he's playing for a team who's, who's doing well in the English Premier League and, uh, you know, uh, I hope that somewhere along the line he might find himself getting talked about for English recognition uh, for his country. But I've said many times the competition for that, that position uh, for England's really strong so he'll need to keep playing well he'll need to keep scoring goals and getting assists to to keep his his name in lights really has he himself spoke about his aspirations to represent his country and of course this year making it more important with the world cup on the horizon no he hasn't but we would be thrilled if it did happen for him but in the same breath his first job is to play well for west ham and i'm more interested in how well he plays for west ham and he continues that form continues to improve He's a really good team player, which we, we like about him as well. So all those other aspects to his game have to have to be there for him to, to get in the West Ham team, first and foremost. Now, change the subject, another uh, day, another Premier League postponement. Uh, is it getting to the point now, David, where there just has to be transparency uh, for everybody involved in the Premier League, whether it's youth managers, the players, the clubs, the fans watching... And are we getting to a point where the integrity of the Premier League is, is kind of under pressure at the moment uh, because of these constant postponements that are being had? Uh, look, I think we've been going through this for a while now. I think we, we all know that it's a difficult period. All the football clubs will have COVID. And uh, yeah, I think sometimes we, we need to know exactly what, what the numbers would be, but... I'm guessing the way you're asking it, James, is because you really want to know what the numbers are and who's out, because it would make it would make the life of of you people much easier and to understand. But the Premier League are the people who have that, and uh, we have to trust that they're doing things correctly. I think that's partly true. Yes, we would like to know ourselves, but I guess the, you know you've had the Norwich game sandwiched between two games against Leeds. Um, the, might be slightly more inconvenient for you. So, you know, with these postponements being made, you know, if, if it's not you as the club making those postponements or calling for them, you're the ones who potentially could suffer. Yeah, that's right. And I think that that's where, where the problems are coming with it. But the Premier League have to have to try and do it, what's right. They, they deem one of the teams, I don't know what team it is, one of the teams have got COVID and that they have to, to go with that. We've had the situation only once this season. Uh, in the Norwich game which was called off earlier in the season but you know it could happen to us so you know I might need to call the Premier League one day and say we don't have enough players and we're, we're struggling to get a team out so if somebody else has got it we have to believe that the Premier League are, are doing the right things and and proving that, that all the numbers are correct now, I know your opponents Leeds have had countless injuries so the over recent weeks uh, but your own side of you what's the availabilities like for Sunday's game any fresh concerns or players returning at all look when you play Sunday Wednesday Sunday you're always liable to pick up more injuries and I think that's the problem with the, with the regular games so yeah we've got one or two knocks and niggles around the camp which we're going to have to assess and see how they are uh, you know Kurt 
Kurt's on his way back. He's he's doing quite well in training, so we just started back really. He's another player who who unfortunately has been down with the virus. So you know those things are you know at the clubs. All the clubs have got situations, whether it be injuries, whether it be people with the, with COVID. But we have to deal with it. We have to just move on and do the best we can. And last one for me. Uh, we're amazingly halfway through January already. January transfer window, of course. Uh, are there any developments from your side? I know you're keen to get some new faces in. Are you any closer to getting anyone in? No, I'd like to bring some new faces in if I could. I'd like to uh, to add to the to the group of players we've got. But uh, we'll try and do it as well as we can and at the moment the ones we're looking for or the ones we'd like to get are either not available or you know we just can't get so we'll keep looking and just see what we can get between now and the, the end of the window All right, David, thank you very much thank you thanks James uh, moving on to Damien from PLP hello James hi Damien uh, just further from what James has said about your current form are even is even you surprised at how well West Ham are doing this season Uh I'm, I'm pausing because I'm thinking of how well we've done in pre-season and how well we started the season and, and the feeling about it and we brought Declan Rice back from the Euros we brought Thomas Suchek back from the Euros they were all full of it when they come back so they all gave us a real a real good chance to uh, to start the season well and we did do uh, but we've, we've felt it a little bit one or two injuries recently have made, made our form be a little bit up and down I still think we're trying to find our best form again but uh, but we're getting closer to it and hope that continues. Can I ask you about Leeds as well? Uh, players coming back, do you sense that they perhaps have turned the corner after the difficulties have been through? I think Leeds are, are. I think Leeds will be fine, and yeah, you know we would expect them probably to have one or two players back by the time we get to our game as well. But uh, look, Leeds are Leeds are a really good side, really difficult to play against. I've I've shown it over the last couple of years. Uh, everybody likes watching them. Everybody knows about their energy and, and how they play. So that makes it really difficult to, to play against. And we've had some really tough games against them over the last uh, year or so. Thanks very much. Thanks, Damien. Thanks, Damien. Emma from BBC. Hi, Damien. Um, Hi, Emma. Just wanted to ask you about Jamie Vardy. Um, he was born on the 23rd of January. Yeah. Um, are you impressed with what he's achieved as a player, how he's developed as a player and in the time he's been at West Ham? Ah, well, you might be better asking people who've been here all the time, but I've been here twice and on the first occasion he was a young boy making his way, he was playing at centre half most of the time. Uh, since I've come back, he you know he'd already been developed into a midfield player, but I think in the last two years he stepped up, he stepped up his leadership, he stepped up his playing. I think everybody would, would see him as an England player at the moment. Uh, a couple of years ago, he was still developing into an England, an England player. But I think how well he's done for, for the national team. But more importantly, you don't get you don't get recognised for the national team if you don't play well for your club side. And uh, Declan's played really well for, for West Ham. And I think he's doing really well. I think he can he can keep moving on. I think he's got a lot of, lot of bits to his games that he can add to it. And... Uh, we're at him all the time to keep improving, keep driving the team on, and show those leadership qualities which uh, I think he's already got for a young man, but uh, they'll get better as he gets older as well. I mean, you mentioned those leadership qualities. Obviously, he wears the captain's armband for you as well. I mean, that's that's a responsibility to give to a young man, isn't it? I think captain in West Ham's a big deal. I really do. I think when you look at the great captains around this club over the years, and probably no, so, no more so than Mark Noble, there's there's far better ones prior to that. But I think Mark Noble would still wear the captain's armband uh, if he was if he was playing in the team and wasn't come nearer coming nearer to to retirement. But overall, you know, he's got a role model to look up to, in Mark Noble, and uh, we hope that Declan can keep carrying it and building on it and improving. You talked about trying to bring in players uh, this month. Mm -hmm. um, how much more appealing are West Ham as a club for players to come to if you're in the top four? Well, I think uh, I think West Ham's an appealing club, London club, uh, but I do understand the, the question, and I think that certainly more appealing now than maybe we've been for a long time. And uh, you know, the jobs to keep that going, to keep us trying to add to 
I'm really keen, Emma, to add to it if we can do it. Uh, the board are, are with me, they want to add as well, they're, they're very supportive. So it's actually trying to identify the, the right players and bring in players which we, we would really like to bring here and, and go on the rest of the journey with us. So we'll keep looking and hopefully something will uh, appear for us in the last couple of weeks. Can I just clarify the team news ahead of the weekend? Because uh, you were missing some players for the uh, Norwich game and I, I don't know if you can tell us if they're injured or they've got COVID. I mean, Thomas Ducek, Mark Noble, what's the current situation? Well, I don't want to uh, be specific, uh, Emma, on, on who's got COVID and who's really got injuries. But yeah, the two you named were out. Uh, and, you know, we're, we're hopeful that we might get, get one of them back. I'm not saying who, but uh, we might get one of them back. We've also got some other niggles which we've picked up from the game. We've also got some other players who've had COVID as well. So we're, we're trying to work what round it like every other club at the moment it's difficult you know we we've got we've got the injuries and covid like, like all the clubs have thank you Emma. Thanks, thanks emma thanks a lot camera off please